Welcome to Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook. My guest today is Kathy DeLugas from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, and she's here to talk about life with the Great Dane. Thanks, Kathy, for joining me today. No problem. And we'll start right away. Can you tell me about Dakota, your Great Dane? Well, he's my six-year-old boy. Um, I got him from a breeder. I, rest I got him at a, as a puppy, eight weeks old. And he's just the love of my life. And now, do you have other pets at home, too? I have another Great Dane, <laughs> a puppy actually, He's a year. he just turned a year old last week, and a nine-year-old Akita. Okay, and um, you, all, you have Nevada, the other Great Dane also. You've had them since they were little puppies, right? Yes, yeah. Tell me about life with Great Dane puppies. Well, they're a lot of work. Puppies are a lot of work, uh, but they are loving, incredible dogs. Uh, they grow very fast. They grow five pounds a week in the first couple of months, so the growth spurt is incredible. They, you watch them and they grow in front of your eyes. But uh, they really are great puppies. Wow, and it's tr talk about training. I mean, because I would think training with a, a giant-sized dog would be something that you would want to do, not just with any dog, but especially with a dog this size. Can you elaborate on that a bit? Well, it is very important to have these guys trained. Uh, having an 150-pound dog that is not trained, you're in for a lot of trouble. Um, so training is a necessity. And uh, you start as puppies, and it's just repetition, consistency. The whole family should get involved. Everybody have a consistent uh, plan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with patience and a lot of love, they turn out to be great dogs. Now, are Great Danes um, good with children? Yeah, I have two children, and uh, they are, they're wonderful with them. Wow, and do you, do you crate train them at all, too? Absolutely. Uh, crate training, uh, is, it's like their den. They, they look at it as their safe haven. They go in there with the doors open all day long. They'll go in just to take a nap. Um, and the crate is a way to save your house, too, because uh, when these large puppies are going through their puppy stage, it protects your, your belongings also. Now, do you use a, a crate when they're adults also? And how do you go about crate training? Maybe tell me about some of the problems, um, you know, initially with training or with starting with crate training. Because I know people can be emotional about putting a little puppy in, in a crate, not understanding how maybe long-term it's actually helping the dog. Yeah, um, well, while, we, while we're at work, we, we put the puppies in the crate. Um, and basically, it's to teach the dog that you're, they're sleeping while you're not home. It, it just... Uh, keeps them it keeps them safe too you don't want them loose in your house while you're not home when they're when they're puppies because uh, they can get into too much uh, they can get hurt also right. so uh, it's really not cruel I mean, you don't leave them in for more than six or seven hours at a pop I, I wouldn't do that um, but they they look at it like my puppy now he's a year old and he's when he feels frightened or he's tired he goes in his crate and lays down we leave the door open during the day when we're home and uh, he goes in there all by himself so that's his, basically his safe place right. to be. He, yeah. he wants to escape from the kids or the family. He can yeah. just go in there. When and he's had enough, that's where he goes. Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I know that people may think that putting pups in a crate is mean. It's, it's, I don't think it's a, a mean thing either, right? No, I think it's, uh, it's definitely it's safer for the pet. Maybe you can share some stories with what happens if you, if you don't crate train your pup. What kind of trouble can a Great Dane grow up to be? Uh, th well, uh, any dog, I've had small dogs do a lot of damage that weren't in a crate during the day when we weren't home also. Uh, but they can wreck a couch in a day. <laughs> they can go through a door in a day. So uh, it, it is for your belongings also till they get out of that puppy chewing stage. Right. I, and um, I would assume that their heads can reach over the kitchen counter. So do you guys in your group do any type of, um, uh, you know, the baby gates to keep them out of certain sections of the house for for safety yeah well while, while they're growing up uh, they can reach the counter they can counter surf and they do counter surf so uh, we keep them out of the kitchen with a with a baby gate tell me about the the size of Great Danes you said that they grow very rapidly how how small or large 
can Great Danes be? Well, the females are typically smaller. Uh, I guess an average for a female could go from 90 to maybe 130. Uh, males tend to be a little larger on an average of 150, but they've, I've seen them go up to 170. Wow, that's so. pretty big. And how much does Dakota weigh? He's 152. He actually lost a couple pounds when we got the puppy because he has a lot more exercise now with his little brother. But, uh, yeah, he's a trim 152. <laughs> now, and uh, he's six and a half, correct? So does that make him um, a senior Great Dane at this point? Yeah, yeah, he's a senior. And he's, he's slowed down a little bit, but uh, average lifespan for the Danes are about uh, eight to ten years. Some, some have been known 11, 12 years. Wow. And do they need a lot of, um, a lot of room? Does somebody have to have a large house? No. To have a Great Dane. No, actually, I'm in a two-family house. I'm in an apartment with two of these guys, and uh, they don't need a lot of room. They, they're basically couch potatoes. They want to be by their people all the time. Uh, occasionally, they'll get a little bout of the zoomies where they run around, uh, <laughs> but b generally, they don't need a big area in the house. Do you have to um, walk the dogs more because they're larger, or...? Well, w once a day, a good walk around the block, a, couple, you know, a, a, a brisk walk is good for them. Uh, they don't need a huge yard to run around in. It's not like they have a, a lot of energy to expend. But for health reasons, to keep them healthy and fit, a good walk around the block is it's every day. For them, yeah. yeah. And I, I've seen pictures of Great Danes laying on sofas. Do you have your own <laughs> a sofa or bed for a, for a dog this size? Because I'm sure it's like a person, right? Yeah, he, uh, well, we share our furniture with him. So uh, he is a couch potato and he shares our couch and he does take up most of the couch. And uh, if him and his brother decide to both be there at the same time, then we don't get to sit on the couch. Uh, <laughs> and, and do they fight over uh, you and your husband, you know, with who gets petted by whom? No, they, they are, they love to be by us, and there's two of us and two of them, so we kind of equal out. So that works out perfectly. And how does Dakota get along um, with the other pets in your in your household, your other dog that's that's not a Dane? Oh, uh, she he gets along fine with her. She's a she's a little moody, but he tolerates her fine. <laughs> wow, and Dakota seems like a, a very friendly dog. A Great Danes, somewhat like Scooby Doo, you know, is portrayed on yeah. TV, personality-wise? They could be goofy. Uh, they can be uh, goofy dogs, but they're lovable. They're just the most loving animals. And you realize when you get one that you <laughs> that you, uh, you want another one. You can't have just one. They're like potato chips. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, he's absolutely adorable. Well, we'll be back in just a moment on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. Welcome back on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm here with Kathy DeLugas from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League. Welcome back. Um, let's continue on with Great Danes and life with a Dane. Tell me about how much food a dog like this <laughs> has to eat. Well, actually, it's, it's deceiving. They don't eat, you would think a dog like this goes through a lot of food. Um, I feed, uh, you feed them premium dog food, and it's about two and a half to three cups twice a day. Okay. And uh, the premium quality dog food uh, is better. Um, then premium dog food, actually you wind up feeding less. The dog gets more out of the food and uh, less intake, less output. It's helpful okay. too. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing <laughs> with that helpful. dog this yeah. size, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, I guess you can probably give a dog treats occasionally too, yeah. but do you feed um, table food at all or no? No, no I, I personally do not uh, give the dogs table food. And uh, personally, I don't like a begging dog, so what he has never had, he doesn't want, so he's not at the fit table while we're eating dinner, begging for the food. That would have been my next question, yeah. is, is I'm sure you don't want a dog this size hanging over your kitchen table, so right. I'd assume that you'd have to train the dog to stay away from the table if you want to have a, a happy family relationship, right. especially if you have guests coming over. That's where the, uh, the importance of training comes in. Um, tell me a little bit about Blow, what it is, and, and, and how it can affect a dog, and what can you do to prevent Blow? Actually, bloat is common in uh, dogs with the low, the b barrel the chest, chest. The, the, the larger breeds, um, and bloat is actually when the stomach twists, and it prevents air from getting in and gas from coming out, okay. and the, the stomach expands, and uh, it's uh, life-threatening. Wow, okay. And other than the, the food, what can you do to decrease that risk? Um, elevated food bowls for these guys is, uh, is recommended where you elevate the food for them to eat about 18 inches on an average 
premium dog food, that's another key. And um, soaking the food before they eat it a little bit with a little bit of water because a lot of um, what people also think causes the bloat is that the food starts out small. Right. And then if they intake a lot of water after they eat, that the food would expand. Okay. So the premium dog food actually doesn't expand as much as the cheaper dog food. Uh, so that's one of the reasons also why I use the premium food. And no exercise an hour before eating and two hours after. Okay. That's something I think, uh, yeah, if you own a barrel just a dog, that's something that you need to know. Yeah, after they eat, they get rest time. Good. And, uh, they know they take a nice nap after they eat. Okay. <laughs> that's all right, yep. And um, tell me about grooming. Are they high maintenance, low maintenance? What do you, what do, you do with a Great Dane as far as um, you know, taking care of them and grooming? Uh, I consider them low maintenance. Uh, I brush once a week, uh, clean the rears once a week, and uh, clipping the nails once every two weeks, and uh, brushing their teeth once a week. Wow, now they, do you do that all yourself? Yeah, I do that. Um, uh, they, they let me uh, start as puppies, getting them used to handling them with their ears and, their t and putting your finger in their mouth and clipping their nails, and uh, they, uh, they actually don't mind it. And how do, you, uh, how do you do baths with a dog this size? <laughs> <laughs> well, he used to fit in the tub, but not anymore. And uh, I, in the summertime, in the spring, when the weather gets warmer, we have those kiddie pools outside. Oh, okay. And uh, I do with the hose, and uh, he gets a bath outside. He does go I to the groomer in the winter months. Does he? Yeah. 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 Yep. And what, what do you think the expenses are for having a dog this size? Well, because the, a lot of medications go by weight and a lot of the uh, preventative treatments, the heartworm medicines and the topical treatments for fleas and ticks, they all go by weight. So naturally, it's going to be more than a chihuahua <laughs> to, right. uh, to um, buy that. But on an average, um, I just did their spring checkups, uh, their yearly checkups, and uh, six months of the heartworm medicine for him, the preventative uh, tablets, was $93. So okay. that's just... You know, uh, and then I bought it at the vet also. You can also go to uh, PetMeds.com and get it cheaper. But Right. So I would think, yeah, you're saying in certain cases, depending on the medications, it's related to the size of the dog. Right. So that will be where more of the expense might come into play. Um, they sound like a lot of work and a, lo and a decent amount of expense. So why do you personally choose to have Great Danes? They're really, to me, there's nothing like one of these gentle giants. They're just incredible. Their, their personality... The, the way they are with their people, they're so emotional. I mean, and they know, they're right, he's in tune with me and how I am. If I'm having a bad day or if I'm upset, he'll just curl up next to me and he just knows. And they're just, they're, they're absolutely wonderful. They sound like they're um, in, somewhat intuitive about their owners. So I guess they would be good for someone who really wants a dog that's going to be glued to them as opposed to maybe, um, you know, a dog that's a loner breeds yeah. type of dog. Uh, my Akita is a little more aloof than uh, <laughs> some people might like. Uh, but these guys, they just, they really need you. And I know that your rescue, I understand they just had a litter of Great Dane puppies. How old are they? Tell me a little bit about the puppies and how, you know, how they've grown. Well, they were, uh, it was a litter of 10 and they were born on March 23rd, I think. And uh, now they're about four weeks old. And I think they're five pounds uh, each now. They were born, when they were born, they were a pound each. Wow. So, uh, and uh, they're going to get into their growth spurts real soon. <laughs> wow. So they uh, expand like sponges, it sounds yeah. like, right? They grow very large very rapidly. So at a year old, how much do you think an, uh, an average Great Dane might weigh? Well, my year old, the one that just turned a year old, uh, Nevada, he's home, and he just is over 135 pounds. Wow. So and that's big. Yeah. He's almost as tall. He's a little shy of him in height, uh, and he's a little thinner. but. And now Dakota is an odd color. What kind of color is that? And what kind of colors do Great Danes come in? Well, actually, uh, they come in a bunch of different colors. Uh, Harlequin, which is, looks like the Dalmatian, the white with the black spots. Uh, then there's Fawn, which would be his color, but they usually have a black mask, where Dakota doesn't. Uh, and there's gray, th that's called a merle, okay. and uh, black and white mantle. Okay. Um, and, I, and a brindle. There is a brindle uh, color, which looks like a tiger stripe almost. And I've also heard sometimes you get um, Danes that are deaf um, coming into rescue. Oh, yeah, that's Does all that, the white. That, yeah, so that maybe is bad breeding? Um, or the all, usually the all-white uh, Danes are deaf, uh, and uh, 
I don't know uh, exactly. Um, not all the white dogs are, are deaf. Some aren't. Um, but there, are, there is uh, bad breeding. There are dogs that shouldn't be bred. And he's a result, actually, of two dogs that shouldn't have been bred because uh, this is an odd color that really shouldn't be. Uh, not that I'm sorry that happened because I love him. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there are people out there that uh, breed not following regulate and not following the standards and uh, unfortunately that's probably how they come into the rescue sometimes yeah, too sometimes. some people probably want them to show dogs and maybe they didn't cut it in the in the colors oh yeah we have stories all the time um, actually one that is forniquin is what they call this uh, where he was white with brown spots and they told the people that they bought the dog from said oh those spots will turn black you know and wow. so that, that's just poor breeding so and people don't yeah. always no, they have to they have to do research on the breed that they're looking for and yeah. find out about the temperament of the dog and, and what's involved in, in caring for it well we'll be back in just a moment on Jefferson Highlights Community Television Highlights Community Television, and I'm here with Kathy DeLugas from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue Week. Uh, Kathy, tell me, how did you get your Great Dane? Yours was from uh, a breeder? Yeah, actually, my two were from breeders. Why should people, I know that you do the rescue now, why should people consider, well, first off, how did you come into finding the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue Week? Well, once uh, I received, the, well, once I got Dakota, um, I just wanted another one and then we got Nevada and then you're on the website and I was searching around and I found the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League website and uh, I looked on their events page and they were going to be at an expo by my house so I went and I visited and I just fell in love with all of the dogs that are up for adoption and, and I fell in love with what they do and it really, if, you are, if you truly love a breed uh, I really believe that rescue is something you should look into because it's just amazing how good it makes you feel uh, to help these dogs and there are so many out there that need help. Well, and I understand that most um, breeds have, there are breed specific rescues on, on websites like Pet Finder, so regardless of what type of, of dog you're looking for, whether it's a mutt or, or a specific breed, you can usually find something fairly local. Right. There's, um, all, there's tons of different chapters of different breeds uh, rescues out there and uh, like I said that's how I found Mid-Atlantic and uh, I became involved with them. Wow and how many do you have any idea how many dogs are in rescue right now? Uh, right right now we have a little over 80 uh, and at any given time it's between 70 and 90 dogs are available. Wow and what states or what what areas are you located in? We're across seven states uh, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Delaware, and D.C. area. Okay. And uh, so you're a pretty big group. And and what do you what what do you do when you volunteer? Obviously, you're here today, so you're volunteering to do this. To yeah. do this. Um, what else do you do to volunteer? Tell me about volunteers. What they can do. What you do. There, there's uh, there's so many things you could do to volunteer. Something as little as uh, helping out with computer work or um, to doing what I do. I I do meet and greets with my dog where I bring a literature and I set up a table with with our dogs and uh, educate the people and the public on the Great Dane Rescue. And uh, I have northern New Jersey, so I'm uh, scattered around this area. But our website does have uh, the whole state of events that we do. Uh, Usually something every weekend is going on all over New Jersey. And uh, there's a lot of things that volunteers can do. Like I said, we need help with um, uh, the meet and greets and events and making copies or uh, helping, uh, helping the foster. We have a network of foster homes uh, with the dogs. And uh, you can help with that. Now, do people have to have a Great Dane to volunteer? Absolutely not. No, we have a lot of volunteers. Uh, some of our volunteers are even allergic to dogs, but they just <laughs> love the they love the breed and they uh, come out and help us. And well, you were mentioning a little bit about foster families. What does it take to become a foster family? Well, um, actually, the, because these dogs are so big and they don't do well in shelters, we try to have a network of foster families that take in the dog, learn about the dog, learn their little habits, what they like, what they don't like. And uh, that way we learn more about the dog himself or herself, where we can match it with a family so it's a perfect match, where uh, some, some like cats 
and aren't good with children and we'll try and match them with somebody who has cats and no children. Uh, and that, that's what's such a benefit with the foster families that we do learn a lot about the dogs. So there's a screening process, I would assume, to become either a foster home or to adopt. So if someone watching the show today says, hey, I'm really interested in adopting a Great Dane, what's the process they go through? I mean, I would assume they can go to your website to get, which we'll give out shortly, but they can go to the website to get um, some information, some basic information. Then they call your phone number. What happens from that point? We have uh, volunteer applications and we have uh, adoption applications and foster applications where uh, there is a screening process. Uh, you have a telephone interview and, uh, and with the fostering, uh, we would actually come out and do a home evaluation to make sure that you, uh, your home is, is uh, safe for the, for the Dane. And um, we we'd go through the different steps uh, just to, for the safety of everybody, for the family for the, that is going to foster and for the dog. Okay, and uh, do, so they're going to get to see a Great Dane, so when it comes to their house, they're going to actually see the size, so that yeah. if you have, you know, like a lot of um, white carpeting and white furniture, for example, you might not be wanting to have a Great Dane, or if you have a lot of, you know, glass knickknacks, yeah. I would assume um, we'll try and get Dakota to stand up, but I'm sure you, that, you know, the tail is up very high because the dog is very tall. Um, so it sounds like you have to have a screening process because you really don't want the dog to come back, you want to make sure that it's placed into a happy family that knows what they're getting into. Right, and that's why, you know, when some people don't realize the size of this dog, you know, they, they see the dogs outside, maybe at a meet and greet or at a pet store, they see somebody with a Dane they want, it, but they really don't actually know the size until they're in their house, you know, wow. everything's relative and uh, sometimes it's just like a Christmas tree, it looks nice out and <laughs> when you're going to pick it out in the, when, at the place where you get your tree, but then you bring it in your house and it's huge, you know. So. Yeah, well, a pet's a long-term <laughs> commitment and especially one this size, you want to make sure that you've done your homework and, and, right. and become educated on regardless of what breed, but especially on, on a giant breed dog. Um, does your group accept donations? What can people donate? Do you look strictly for, you know, for money, do monetary donations? Do you, do you look for what? Oh, what we, do you need? All sorts of things. Uh, we look for things that, for uh, stamps. Uh, envelopes, uh, dog toys, dog food, treats, uh, bedding, uh, monetary donations. There's also a virtual fostering uh, on our website where you can actually go into our website and donate money uh, and it's like virtual hugs, hugs and tummy rubs and stuff like <laughs> that for the dogs. And, uh, so monetary is always good also and volunteering your time is, is a huge asset to us. Uh, we always need more help and more people to come out. Well, hopefully people watching today who are interested, they will call you. How can people contact you? Um, do you have a website or a phone number that they can reach you at? Yeah, our website is uh, www.magdrill-newjersey.com. So it's M-A-G-R-D-L-newjersey.com. Uh, or you can contact our state coordinator at 973-334-1628. Great, and what's the best part of belonging to Dakota? Oh. It's, <laughs> he's just the love of my life. He's, in, he's incredible. I've never ever thought, you don't think you can love something so much till you, till you get a dog like wow. this. Wow, well he's, he's very, very sweet and I want to thank you both for joining us. Oh, it was our pleasure. And I'm Lori Zook. Thanks for joining us today on Jefferson Highlights Community Television.